when we're looking at animal behavior, we're really ultimately reading out functions of the nervous system. How the nervous system works is one of the big mysteries in biology and neuroscience. And I think that that's a place where the worm can step in and be really powerful because given that it's transparent and so easy to work with experimentally, it has only 302 neurons, that lets us really powerfully go in and assign the sort of neural substrates for these different aspects of animal behavior that we study. So one behavior that the community has been really interested in is the ability of worms to detect and avoid bright ultraviolet or blue light. And so that makes sense in terms of the worm's natural behavior because the worm's transparent. So if the worm ever went into direct sunlight, it would begin to run the risk of damaging its DNA. What was harder to understand is that worms don't have eyes. So how are the worms detecting the light anatomically and also molecularly, how do they do it? Earlier work by other groups in the field found a protein called light one that seems to be required for the worm to run away from bright light. And something that was really surprising is that unlike other genes that detect light, light one looks a lot like a taste receptor. So this was sort of odd. We got involved in this a little bit later when we found that shining this bright light onto a worm also inhibited their feeding behaviors. And so we wondered whether maybe the light could be producing noxious tastes and then the worm is tasting them. So maybe it's able to taste light via these products that light produces. And sure enough, we found that one of these chemicals, hydrogen peroxide, if you give the worm hydrogen peroxide, they'll stop eating and start to spit. And that inhibition of eating depends on these same genes that control the responses to light. And so we found a neuron that directly controls the muscles that produce spitting. I found three neurons which are able to function upstream of this neuron to make the worm spit. And something that has been unexpected and interesting about that is that we found that these neurons that produce spitting are also involved in inhibiting the muscles of the mouth to make the worm stop eating. We think that really the worm is sort of like balancing these two competing needs to one, stop eating so that you stop ingesting this bad thing, and two, to be able to eject the bad thing that is in your mouth out of the mouth. I think that what we're doing is important because the worm community is having a lot of firsts in being able to connect the behavior of animals to the structure of their nervous system and their genetics. We're going to learn more and more about ourselves and our nervous systems, and that has implications not only for our health and our well-being, but also what our place in the world is.